Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, we begin with the Kelly 3 spacecraft on the Nico 2544 on the launch pad ready to go. We have a backup one just in case. And, well, that's a little bit complicated because, of course, the backup can't be launched... Um, well, I don't know whether it can be launched uncrewed, so... Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, but, but... Yeah... That's complicated. <laughs> uh, remember, the Gemini capsule doesn't seem to want to allow the launch to occur uncrewed, so we would probably have to do some modification to that in a rescue sort of situation, and then it'd take another four days to actually roll it out. It took four days to roll out this Kelly 3 on a Nico 2544, so yeah, as far as rescue missions go, it'd still be tight. Uh, we just finished mature capsules, so we will have other capsules to work with. That'll be good. Uh, we're also working on the Kelly 3 Earth Orbit Edition. Uh, that's almost done, actually. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, the Kelly 3 took so long to get to the launch pad. But yeah, that could also be used as a backup, I suppose. But same issues. And then we'll be working on Spaceport 1. There's another Jupiter orbiter here. And we've got a Jupiter window in 80 days there. So that is... That is something we can plan, but before that, our Venus mission will be approaching approaching Venus, but it'll be a high pass, remember. We didn't quite get it very low. Uh, so yeah, it is time to do a moon landing, and we've got 43 days to complete the contract, so it'll either be this one or the one that we've got in storage. So let's launch, and I'm going to make sure that we have a pilot and a engineer. I guess we'll have Valentina try and do it. And we'll have Alan Kerman as the... Oh, well, okay, let's just go with uh, the orange suits. We'll have Bill as the engineer. Okay. All right, here is our proud rocket. But before we get going, we should probably uh, check on our inclination. It looks like the liquid oxygen is boiling off. So that's interesting, especially since liquid hydrogen isn't. I guess the liquid oxygen might be boiling off from one of the kerosene tanks. Yeah, we're totally wrong. So let's get the fuel pumps working to make sure that the oxy oxygen stays topped off. It took a long time to load this rocket on the launch pad. Uh, well, it's a big rocket. Uh, so toggle pump. Uh, I really didn't want the water topped off. That might change our delta V situation just a bit on the upper stages, but I guess we'll go with it. Okay, well, it's time to go. Throttle up. SAS is on. Valentina and Bill look fine. Ignition. And launch. Off we go. Thrust weight ratio is fairly high, so we can start our turn sooner rather than later. We are past the speed of sound now, and we've lost an engine. I don't know exactly where. I don't know if it's on the core or the boosters. I think it's on the core. But at this point, we could probably lose like a quarter of our engines or a third of our engines and still be able to continue. Okay, we've lost another engine. Well, 23 out of 25 is not bad. Ah, uh, hmm. I just thought of something. It means one of the boosters will run for longer, doesn't it? Oh, shoot. Yeah, it's this one. So when the other boosters go out, I'm gonna have to lock the liquid oxygen before separating. So that it shuts off. I think I probably hotkeyed the booster engines, but... 
Okay, sup. Alright, they're off. We only have eight engines on the core right now. But definitely providing more than enough power. Okay, sup. And a vision. All right, four NK-15Vs are lit, and we can get rid of the launch escape system now. All right, everything's looking good. All right, set. Second stage was successful, and ignition. Here we go of the NK-19s. There's quite a bit of margin with this stage. I wonder if we could use the extra Delta V on this stage instead of just dis ditching it. Because right now we would probably have to ditch it, but it depends on where we're at. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, there's the descending node. And it seems reasonable to hit the moon over there. Maybe we could just keep boosting out in this direction and it'd be fine. So we could use the Delta V on this stage instead of ditching the thousand that will be left over. I don't actually want to hit it uh, on the opposite side of the node over there because that might be too long a trip. Yeah, that'd take too long, but at least we're sort of going out in the right direction, so maybe it's alright. We'll just keep it burning. Uh, we are going down though, that's not right. I forgot that this stage was relatively low powered, I didn't reserve enough time to apoapsis for it. just focused on all the spare Delta V, I forgot to just manage what we were supposed to be doing. I don't know if it'd make that much difference trying to use the Delta V from this stage to begin our boost to the moon. After all, uh, we probably don't want to carry the controller that is necessary to um, use the S4 stage all the way to the moon with us in order to have the S4 make orbit. That's the downside, because that's going to take electric charge and we don't have a way of recharging fast enough to satisfy that controller. Well, this is all a little bit dodgy, but maybe we'll be able to rescue this. We really don't want an engine to go out right now, though. Okay, cutting it a little bit close here, and... Thank goodness an engine didn't go out, but it uh, looks like we're going to catch it at 169 kilometers, and we should start going up again. Obviously, there was an option to actually dispose of it in the atmosphere, but I'd rather take all the Delta V I can get just in case. You never know if the RL-10 stage is going to have some weird problem, right? Okay, engine shutdown and separation. Okay, we're ready to plot with the RL-10 stage, the S4 stage. And let me do that. We are we are on our way to the moon. Okay, we have a plot for the moon. It'll take an extra 2,400 meters per second. And we'll get there with a periapsis of 187 kilometers in 2 days and 22 hours. So that's pretty good. The question is whether we can subsequently carry this along with us. But with you know this part all covered up, uh, we're not really recharging. We could just run the fuel cells, I suppose. But I don't think that'd be enough to fully keep our charge. So I do think that we're going to have to ditch this stage 
despite the fact that it's going to have leftover delta v. But at least using the delta v from that nk19 stage means that if something goes wrong here, um, it might not hinder us. Okay, so uh, we've got a node in 1 hour and 54 minutes. Longer than usual because we boosted our orbit higher. Okay, let's hope I have everything that needs to be locked, locked. Uh, I don't think so. These aren't even firing. Mm, I've got the Arizona N204 tank up here. Uh, let me toggle crossfeed here. And let me try and make sure everything's locked up there. All right, okay, well, looks like they're ready to light. So, throttle up, and ignition. Okay, six RL-10s are good. Timing-wise, it might not have been great. If we're late, basically that means that we'll take longer to get to the moon. So that's the, that's the thing. The later we were on the burn, the longer it takes to get to the moon. It won't hurt our chances to get there because the relative inclination is so low. Okay, here we go. Attempting to complete this burn, but it's going to be touchy, of course. We are not ending up with as much spare delta V as I thought, mainly because we couldn't do this burn as low as I would have liked. Okay, shut down. Okay, well that's not a bad periapsis to start off with. Okay, um, it'll take three days to get there instead of two days and a bit. Yeah, we'll have to ditch this stage, there's no way to keep it hanging around, so off it goes. Alright, and let's unlock this bit. Let's make sure everything else is locked. Up there. Okay. Could have used that fuel to top this off, but I don't think we lost that much fuel. Okay, forward, forward, forward. We really don't need the RCS constantly firing right now. Not until we get to daylight and we can use orient our solar panels properly. And now I know about persistent rotation. Uh, for some reason... Oh, it consumed our fuel cell fuel. Uh-oh. Yeah, because I had allowed... Hmm, this stage consumed our fuel cell fuel first because I had allowed uh, crossfeed from there. It's always something, isn't there? Well, uh, I'm going to turn our fuel cells off right now. And hopefully we can get the, uh, the solar panels to charge us up once we get into daylight. Let's see about that. Okay, well, we're, we are recharging. Let's see, persistent rotation. Momentum. Oh, I need SAS on. SAS on. Um, not that. Rotation. Relative rotation to the sun. Okay, I think that'll do it. And since we're recharging right now, this angle should be fine. Let's see. Okay, well, crisis averted. But we did a lot of turning. Let's see. Well, our moon periapsis is really low right now, but that's better than nothing. Ah, our uh, carbon dioxide's building up. Let's get the CO2 scrubber on. Okay, we are now in lunar SOI. And let's lift that periapsis, uh, periapsis up. Uh, let us lift that periapsis up a little bit. I think I'll take 60 kilometers. I think that's quite all right. Seems a little bit tight, but not horrid. 
Well, despite the loss of the fuel cell fuel on this portion, we seem to be alright. I double checked, we do have electric charge down here. And I fully expect that the power supply should hold out as long as we orient properly towards the sun. Um, the situation on the dark side of the moon, literally the dark side, you know, the nighttime side, uh, might be iffy. But we don't expect to be staying around too long. Uh, for the pod, we can run the fuel cells during that. It's just a matter of whether this might have some electric charge depletion. But uh, I don't think in the time that we expect to hang around here that it's going to be an issue. And shut down. 88 by 62. It's got 89 by 62. And I think we're ready to go. Okay, we are on the nighttime side of the moon and we are getting ready to decouple for descent. We might as well do so now. Let's double check. Electric charge. Well, it is the nighttime side, so it's going to be somewhat depleted on that. Okay, well, mm, decouple. Off it goes. It's still operational and in communication. So that's good. And here we are. Here we go again. We've got eight landing legs now. And we're stouter. Alright, we are now on the daylight side and we're fairly low, 21 kilometers. And that's um, based on the datum, so let's get surface info. It's actually only uh, 7 kilometers up from the surface and we are going to begin landing operations. So let's rotate a bit and we will need to preserve some control over our vertical speed. Don't want to go down too fast and ignore it. This is certainly going to be more efficient than most of my landings considering how close we are. Looks pretty darn bumpy though. Might want to gain some more height just so I can plop it down in a safer place. That, that area right there especially looks horrible. Yeah, this looks like a better plane to sit down on. So we've got throttling on these engines. That's the good part. The downside is that they don't have gimbling. So the Astros engines had gimbling, but no throttling. Well, I'm going to extend the ladders right now. Ah, oh, the ladders clip in. Hmm, that might cause some problems. Remember, the Kerbal jetpacks aren't what they normally are. They're sort of nerfed. Hmm, that might, yeah, that might be an issue. It says human moon landing. I wonder if that causes problems since I'm only carrying Kerbals. That's sort of silly, isn't it? What is this human thing? Well, it says crew at least one Kerbal. I think they're confused. Oh, it requires biome highlands? I didn't note that. Oh, shoot. We're in the wrong biome. Oh, boy. Well, that's what you get for not reading the fine print there. What biome are we over? Well, there's not highlands, I guess. I mean, it's pretty high. I mean, the surface is 13,000 kilometers. I mean, 13 kilometers. Um, oh, this isn't that. I mean, I wonder which section has biome. Midlands only. Well, poo. But actually, it doesn't require us to... Well, we can't fulfill it anyway. It just needs a situation landed. It doesn't actually require a pl flag planting. We do have to stay in orbit around the moon. Once we get back up, we'll have to stay in orbit around the moon for a little bit to fulfill that lunar orbital contract. The crude lunar orbital one wants uh, apoapsis below 300 kilometers and periapsis above 20, but I'll be fine. But we have to stay in orbit for 20 hours. Well, I guess we get to test the system out and then we'll have to try it with a different launch, the backup launch.
Okay, we're down. And we're upright this time. That's good. That's positive. Good sign. Hmm. So yeah, there's the whole ladder issue and the fact that the jetpacks aren't going to work well enough. When they get out, I don't even know if they can reach these ladders. Hmm. And then these are tilted in too far. Well, I guess we can check. Um, that'll be Bill's job. I feel. Um, he really can't go side to side right now. Uh, okay. Can you climb there? Clamber? Um, grab? Yeah. Okay, can you go down this ladder? Yeah, well, uh, not really. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Don't do that. Uh, he's got a chattery issue. Well, okay. Take surface sample. Oh, by the way, we can't even plant flags yet. Okay, well, keep that. EV report. Keep that. Apparently, we haven't done those yet. That's 320 signs. That's good. Hmm. Uh... He... Hmm. He seems to have a bit of a problem here. Grab? No. Every time I say grab, he flops back and then the camera jitters. And I suppose... Yeah, that's not gonna help. Um, jump. 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 Man, astronauts could jump better than that. There we go. Um... Jump, uh, grab, grab. Uh, okay, grab. Okay, well, that was close. Oh, that was physics in action. There's excessive ragdolliness with uh, Bill here. Gotta say. Don't think that's gonna be close enough to grab. Okay, so. RCS on. Hmm. Jump forward. Grab, grab, grab. Up, 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 up. Yeah. Okay, but can you get up there? Uh, climb, 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 climb. Okay, but can't get to the crew hatch. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good, Bill. How did you poof the landing struts like that? That's some magic you got there. Hmm. I'm half tempted to retract the landing struts just so it settles down on the ground. Okay, maybe if you start climbing a little bit off to the side here, you can reach your thing. Your hatch. Yeah. Uh, that's... Now you're causing problems, Bill. Now you're causing problems. Um, this, uh, oh, no! Uh, RCS, uh, RCS, please. No! No! Oh... This strikes me as a precarious position. Hold on, let me retract that ladder. I don't know if they're propping it up or not. I don't know how we're sitting like this, actually. Nope. No idea. Right, well, this isn't going to make it easier to get Bill up there. I think at this point, we're close to requiring a uh, quick load. As much as I hate to do such things. I mean, can, can you clamber if I... Hmm. Jump, jump, 
Okay, maybe, yeah, jumping with the jetpack is probably better. Well, let me extend that one again. Retracting them didn't seem to do anything useful. Unfortunately, the pod is still skidding. Right. So if like I launch with Bill sort of clinging to the ladder, will that be all right? Like, you know, like that. I'm getting the feeling that that's not going to be all right. Oh, he knocked us all a panel and now we're horizontal. Well, we can get him back in the pod now. He's excited, but yeah, this is obviously back to the bad situation. right nope nope this is this is not gonna happen again we landed it properly let me quick load and land it again sorry about this okay well here we go again but this time I can't set Bill down so we can't really do the science huh that rather sucks yep that's not great I don't suppose there's some like Highlands around here just happens to be highlands close by. I didn't really do any biome mapping. I wonder how much we would lose if we just didn't do that moon landing contract. Because we've got a lot to do, you know. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Okay, well, that doesn't make them the struts break, but. Apparently, Bill bumping into them does. Okay, well, no, we don't need descent mode. Let's analyze telemetry. Well, that's worthless. Okay, um, a crew report? Well, at least we get 20 for that. But, yeah, as far as science goes, since we can't bring them outside safely, this is a bust. We'll need some sort of ladder rungs across this bit, but that's weird. The Gemini caps. I don't really want to put ladder rungs on a Gemini capsule. And I don't know if it'll say that the crew hatch is blocked if I do. Well, I mean, if we EVA him and have him hang over here, can he do a EVA report there? It doesn't matter. It's in space near the moon. Okay, well, that doesn't count. It's a better vantage point than from the surface, you know. So we need to go west. Okay, well, here we go. Going up. Finally, a proper ascent from the moon. Time to unlock this tank. Okay, and set. And on we go. It's wiggling, wiggling around a lot, so let me recycle SAS a bit. Try and settle it down. Oh, we went too early. I was looking at the wrong one, darn it. Ours is actually much further back. We're only two degrees off. I was wondering, that looked like more than two degrees, but we're only two degrees off. But unfortunately, it's way behind, so we'll get into a higher orbit. Actually, with our fuel remaining, we could probably make it back home without rendezvousing with the other portion. Uh, we've done a relatively good job of um, overall efficiency here. So that we probably have enough to plot for home just with this stage. But we'll do the whole thing. Okay, we are now within render range of the target, but judging from the fact that local control is in red there, my guess is we can't uh, communicate with it. There's no line of sight back to Earth, and I don't think this can control it on its own. Well, we're edging closer, but I'm deliberately going slow because, well, we don't have connection with it yet. And I'd like to make the docking part of this easy. Come on, Earth. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. 
All on its own, this little thing has 3,567 meters per second in it, but it's not carrying anything. So yeah, I mean, obviously we had a bit of a problem with this mission. It looks like we could just land in the highlands with the next mission and it satisfied a contract. But I'm not thrilled with the idea of having to do that. That's, uh, I don't want to repeat this. So I might take a look at, and also we've got this huge budget and maybe, maybe feeling something might bring it into a more restrained that give us uh, more of a sense of desperation and stuff like that. So we'll see. We'll see the situation. Uh-oh. Uh, we're getting first signs of cities on the moon again. See? Didn't see them for most of the way. But now uh, there's, there's, there are little glimmers of them right now. Seems like the longer you hang out around the moon, the more likely they are, they are to happen, I guess. Okay, we are docked. Wasn't quite sure how that would turn out, but looks good. Let's turn these guys off. Not that they're bad engines to use in this case, but I'll go with the Astros engines right now. So, we might as well pump all the fuel into that tank. We'll keep that module hanging out, though, because uh, we could use its solar panels. 2,160 meters per second. Well, I think that'll be enough to get back home. Yep. So let's do it. Okay, here we are. 804.4 meter per second burn. Which should get us a uh, low pass over Earth. Like I've aimed for like 50 kilometers. So here we go. Okay, we'll fine-tune it now. Let's see what's really going on. Periapsis of a thousand kilometers. We should definitely use some of this extra Delta V to slow ourselves down on the Earth side so we don't have to even bother with a second pass. I'll go with 60 and then we'll use the Delta V here to slow down. All right, 59 kilometers. I'm always reluctant to go too deep, but. All right, back we go. Unfortunately, they couldn't get out. Well, not really. Uh, Bill hung on to the ladder, but couldn't step onto the surface because weak jet packs and bad ladder placement. Life support wise, we've got, uh, it looks like five days of oxygen remaining. That's surprising. We should carry more oxygen, it looks like. Water is no problem because of the fuel cell replenishing it. But uh, there's no reason to have more uh, less time for oxygen than we have food. Looks like we'll be encountering Earth on the nighttime side, but it'll be the Pacific Ocean. Well, we can maximize how much punch we get out of the Delta V remaining by ditching this portion. So let me move its uh, hydrogen and oxygen up here. And other oxygen. So I'll manually click here and say decouple. All right, now just the pod and that stage. Gotta manage the periapsis carefully here. Okay, still at 59 kilometers. I think that's where we'll keep it. We definitely slowed down. We brought the apoapsis in. Orbital period is only five hours right now. Okay. At 400 kilometers, we'll ditch that stage. Right. Okay. Undock. We're in the in this portion, and let's push it away. Seems prudent. And then switch back to the pod. Unlock the pod zone fuel. Retrograde. 
I really need to put some thrusters that are better at rolling this thing. They don't seem to be placed right for rolling. Well, things are blowing up in the distance. I thought we had pushed it away nice and far, but... Apparently not far enough. It's really shaking us. It's very disconcerting. Okay, let's just have you hold roll. No, uh, no pitch, please. Well, it's already maxing out roll each way. I don't know. Can't get any good help with roll these days. I don't know why pitch is being applied at all. Looking good. I think we should come down on this pass. It's doing that thing where it's raising our periapsis a lot, though. Yep, it'll be this pass. No problems. Uh, well, uh, our current trajectory indicates that we might land anywhere between, oh, New Mexico and Georgia. So we're not splashing down. We're definitely landing on land somewhere in the United States. Well, that's convenient in a way. Well, there's California. Passing right by Los Angeles. Now heading down. Now passing over Arizona. I think that's Phoenix right there. Well, I mean, considering this is Arizona right here, that's the biggest city by a long ways, so... Yep, I assume that's Phoenix. And that's Los Alamos right... well, sorry, White Sands. Well, we're now uh, building up G-forces. We're at 1G. 50 kilometers in 4Gs. Oh shoot, I just realized we didn't stay around the moon for 20 hours. I just wanted to get them back. Ah, uh, So we didn't fulfill that one either. Oh, well, that's horrible. Well, it looks like next time we're going to have to launch again, but we should edit the ladders. I don't think we reached 5 G's, did we? 4.5 G's. And yeah, uh, northwest of Dallas. Yeah, that's disappointing. All I had to do was hang out there for 20 hours, but no. We had the electric charge, there wasn't any problems. Uh, even now, we have enough... Well, I mean, we dumped some oxygen because we separated the, the um, service module. We would have had enough, that wasn't a problem. Just in a rush to get them back home. And full parachute deployment brings us to 5.2 meters per second. Very good. I don't think we need retro rockets on landing for this one, hopefully. Hopefully they'll be alright with the impact. Well, these are the Earth Highlands. Not as high as the Lunar Highlands, uh, not as high as the Lunar Midlands, in fact. But there you are. Wow, those parachutes went off in a hurry. Um, well, maybe you can do an EVA report here. Yeah, actually. EVA report while flying at Earth. Keep experiment. 
I don't know if it's okay to bring her down and do a... I mean, we need to get some science out of this mission. Uh, oh, well, let's um, take her for sample. Oh, no science for that. Okay. Okay, anyway, let's recover vessel. Okay, well, 31 science earned. Uh, we got pretty good value for returning the parts because we are rather close to the KSC this time. And our Kerbals, uh, well, Valentina didn't gain any XP, but Bill did, so that's good. Hmm, taking a look at mission control and active contracts. The low lunar orbit thing failure is 429,000. Lunar landing thing failure is 876,000. So could we get away with not doing it? Yeah, yeah we could. Should we? The reputation hits pretty severe. It's not so much the funds, but the reputation hit combined is like 3,000 points. I don't even know what that signifies on this scale, but it's probably pretty bad. So, unfortunately, I think next time we will launch the backup mission, but I'll, at the beginning of the next episode, edit it first to uh, add the ladders properly. And, yeah, we'll go from there. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.